Good morning. We are so delighted that you've joined us for the CBS Family Service today. We are excited as we come to the end of the month of July and as we conclude this month's theme on the subject of prayer. Our speaker today is, uh, it is our honor and our delight to have uh, with us, is here with us for the very first time on CBS. Uh, she is Mrs. Ada Doyer. And uh, she's the wife of our uh, uh, first Bishop Emeritus, the Reverend Boniface Adoyo, but she's an amazing prayer warrior. Anyone who's been watching uh, Hope TV will know her program, Watch and Pray. And uh, 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 Mrs. Adoyo, I know a lot of people who watch that think, oh, this is such a powerful woman of prayer. Where did she learn to pray? And, and how is it that she prays with such power and passion? Could you tell us how this began in your life? Actually, uh, I, I almost want to say I don't know. <laughs> I almost want to say I don't know. But um, I think, like they say, practice makes perfect. Amen. I, I just uh, realized that, um, first of all, this, this verse now, I didn't, uh, I didn't remember to quote it, but uh, um, uh, cursed is he whose trust is in man. Mm. I just realized that I, my trust had to shift. Amen. Not from, not, not just be there, because my life was just like a good wife to a good man of God, Amen. a man who loves God. Mm. Even before he, my husband became a pastor, it was just like, I'm safe. Yeah. I'm safe. Mm. I did, I've done everything right. Mm. But then I realized, no, however saintly mm. a man can be, mm. he's still a man. He's All still right. an arm of flesh. Yes. So I just, it just dawned on me that God is the only one that I can trust and I can entrust myself to. Wow. So I wow. just began connecting Amen. with him Amen. and uh, Amen. Uh, it has just grown. Amen. And uh, I think as, as one desires yes. and longs, yes. sometimes, uh, Reverend Kwame, mm. uh, sometimes when I'm praying on that watch and prayer, I, I, I sometimes I just say, I wish somebody would just see this passion mm. and that alone, alone yes. to motivate somebody to say, wow. okay, let me also just try Amen. because even in trying yes uh, in trying god honors that yes. attempt yes. that's why even he says in isaiah that come and reason with me, me. you know mm -hmm. so he gives us that opportunity amen yes we're looking forward i think it's going to be a real eye-opener and and certainly a good conclusion as you share with us a little later on in the service if you're joining us on hope fm and uh, hope tv we are delighted to have you many of you are watching us on the Seatam church online um social media platforms and we want to say please let others know that this amazing service and uh, the message that you're going to be hearing on looking to Jesus in prayer is going to be a blessing uh, to them as well. So please do join our worship team. We're just about to get started. Our sister uh, Alice and Pastor Patrick are going to be our worship leaders. I want to hand over now to our worship team. And so Alice, over to you. Thank you so much, Reverend Kwame and Mama Ada. And the Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Amen. And so we welcome you together as we praise the King of Kings. Yes. Hallelujah. He's worthy of all our praise. Hallelujah. Come and put your hands together wherever you are. Hallelujah. We give you glory. Oh, we love you, Lord. Yes. We give you all the worship. Yeah. 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 So one thing we ask of you. One thing that we desire, that as we worship you, Lord, come and change our lives. So arise, 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 say arise, arise, take your place, be a throne, be a throne, 
lift you up on our praises. Hey. We lift you up, we lift you up, we lift you up on our
Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. He's the great I am. He's great and he's greatly to be praised. Come on, lift up our worship to him. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift you up, oh God. We lift you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. I wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. And it doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. And I'll never be more loved than I am right now. I'm going through a storm, but I won't go down. Yeah. I hear your voice, cut it in the rhythm of the wind to call me. Cross the ocean, so I wouldn't run. You've never been closer than you are right now. We call oh, we your say. name, Jaira. You are enough. Your name is Jaira. 
wherever you are, whatever your condition, whatever your situation, let your response be hallelujah. Let your response be to lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, for he alone is worthy, worthy to be praised regardless of where you find yourself. How good it is to know that you're loved, that you're chosen, that you're special to God. Oh, may his presence fill our hearts, fill the space that you're in right now. Whether you're driving a car, whether you're sitting in a living room, whether you're sitting alone on a bed and you're crying to yourself, uh, let your response be hallelujah. Let the presence of God fill where you are right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pause as we worship you. First, to thank you for your loving kindness to us, that you remember that we are dust, O oh God. You remember the burdens that we bear. You know the tears that we cry, O oh God. And we thank you for sharing in our pain. We thank you, O oh God, for hearing our cry. We thank you for answering our prayers all month long, indeed all through our lives. Our response today is hallelujah. Our response today is thank you, Jesus. Our response today is that you deserve the glory and you are worthy, worthy, worthy. Father, as we gather in this moment and opportunity of worship and thanksgiving, we give you praise and honor. We thank you, O oh God, for reaching out and blessing and helping our brethren, especially in the nation of Namibia. Lord God, who have gone through tremendous pain and difficulty, who have seen a huge spike, O oh God, in the infections of the coronavirus. Lord God, we pray that you'll show mercy to that nation. We pray, O oh God, that you'll also show mercy to the nation of South Africa that has been torn apart and torn asunder by grievous pain, O oh God. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. As you visit those nations, you remember our nation as well. You remember the nations of the earth, O oh God, that are under the ravages and pain, O oh God, of this pandemic. We ask you in the name of Jesus Christ, that as your people arise and seek your face and seek revival, as we respond with thanksgiving, as we respond with hallelujah, Lord God, you will move in our midst. You will reveal yourself and turn our situations around. Oh, worship team, let's do that one more time. Our response is hallelujah. My oh. response is my response. we thank God how I, I just wish I could bring you from where you are to this stage just to feel the presence of God that fills this space that at this very moment the same God whom we are worshiping right now wants to minister to your situation minister to your need how blessed we are to know a God who loves us who chose us who knows that we are but dust and still reveals himself to us Oh, we praise God. Worship team, we want to appreciate you. We thank God for your ministry today. And if you've been blessed by this worship team, just in the chats there, put your hands together and let's give glory to God. The Lord bless you and thank you for your ministry. Amen and amen. I, I, I really pray that you are lifted to a whole new situation. The atmosphere here has changed and I know that in your home, in your car, wherever you might be, the presence of God is filling your lives Today We have been truly blessed by our CBS worship team, and I certainly hope that you will carry this wonderful flavor, this wonderful sense and aroma of the presence of God wherever you go this week as well. It's been a great, great time. Thank you so much for joining us today, for tuning in to, uh, uh, to us here on uh, CETAM Church Online platforms, on Hope TV, on Hope FM, wherever you are. We're so grateful to have our good friends in the United States joining us in East Timor, in Romania. Romania, God bless you. God bless you, Reverend uh, Beecher. We know that you've just gotten back to ministry there, and I know the church is truly blessed uh, by your ministry. And having you present on the ground, it is wonderful 
to be blessed by you. I, I just want to turn to our friends and brethren in Namibia. I know you've gone through a tremendously difficult time and that by the grace of God, uh, even as you've had to do a, a very, very stringent lockdown, the favor of God continues to be upon you. Many of you are bereaved. We know that our, our good friend uh, and pastor there, uh, Pastor Herman, uh, has been bereaved, I think, twice already. But we know that the Lord whom we trust is able to comfort far more than any one of us could imagine. So hang in there, Namibia. We are praying for you. Thank you so much for subscribing and for being a part of this amazing online international family here on CBS. If you've never subscribed before, all you need to do is to hit the subscribe button uh, and, and press the notification bell and we will always let you know when we have a ministry on YouTube uh, or even on uh, Facebook as well. Please remember to share what's going on here. Today, we have the hashtag, look to Jesus, hashtag, Look to Jesus. Please share that on uh, YouTube, share it on Facebook, and of course, share it on Twitter. And tweet about what God is saying to you, how the Spirit of God is ministering to you as well. We have a special guest. Uh, those of you who were with us at the very beginning know that our speaker today is none other than Mrs. Ada Doyle. We'll be ha hearing more from her as she speaks to the same subject of looking to Jesus. Remember, the hashtag is hashtag look to Jesus. We'll be hearing from Mrs. Zadoyo uh, shortly. Uh, and now it's going to be a privilege to let you know what's going on in our ministry. Uh, there are a few announcements to share with you about what God is doing here and what God can do for you as you connect with us. We are delighted to welcome you today to our CBS family service. If you are watching us on Hope TV or listening on Hope FM or those of you streaming live on our Sitem Church online social media platforms for the very first time, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us as we take time to worship and hear from God. We also have a special youth service live on Hope TV and on the Sitem YT Nation social media pages every Saturday from 2 p.m. Our CBS Sunday School happens every Sunday at 8.30 a.m. for ages 10 to 12 years, at 9 a.m. for ages 5 and below, and 9.30 a.m. for children 6 to 9 years. On Tuesdays, please join us on Hope TV, Hope FM, Facebook and YouTube at 5 p.m. for the After Sunday Live discussion where any questions you have about the subject of the sermon today will be addressed. We welcome you to join us on Wednesday for the live midweek prayer service from 6 p.m. broadcast on Hope TV and Hope FM and on all the Sitem Church online social media platforms. We invite you to send in your prayer requests before and even during the service. Our pastors will be praying with you and for you. We want to thank all our Safari groups for continuing to meet faithfully online. We expect Safari group meetings to be virtual, using social media platforms like WhatsApp or meeting by Zoom until further notice. If you are not in a Safari group and you wish to join one, please send us a message on our WhatsApp numbers plus 254-784-277-277 Airtel and plus 254-728-221-221 Safaricom and we will guide you on how to join one in your area. Planning to get married? We urge all our members to contact your senior pastor for direction on the steps to be taken in preparation for your wedding. Our pastors will conduct weddings, keeping strictly with the Ministry of Health guidelines, so please contact your pastor in good time to make arrangements. We express our deepest condolences to all who are bereaved in this season. We wish to inform you that our pastors will be available to conduct funeral services strictly following the current protocols from the Ministry of Health. We will also conduct the burial service on site according to the current Ministry of Health protocols as well. Please contact your respective senior pastor for guidance. All our Sitem Church offices are open between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Monday to Friday, strictly observing all current Ministry of Health protocols. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitem Broadcast Service and thanks for paying attention to these notices. Our Sitem assemblies around Kenya are open for in-person services, except for those affected by further COVID-19 restrictions in the Western region. If you would wish to attend the in-person services, 
kindly note that you will have to register in advance to book a seat. You can do so by using the USSD code STAR 483 STAR 933 HASH for both Safaricom and Airtel users and follow the instructions to receive a seat confirm for the service you choose to attend. Alternatively, you can use the church website www.sitam.org to register. Sitting capacity is limited to not more than one-third of the capacity of the sanctuary and all other Ministry of Health protocols still apply. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. All of our assemblies in the western part of Kenya, we want to thank you for joining us. We know that a good number of you have had to go through the lockdown, a very serious lockdown because of incidences of uh, uh, COVID-19 infections in your part of the country. But we're so glad that you join us right here on CBS. And for everyone else, if you are watching this after the fact, please share the link. Let other people know that CBS is offering great ministry for you. It's now time to worship the Lord through giving. And we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for all those who have given sacrificially, given cheerfully uh, unto the Lord through this ministry. Uh, we know God is going to truly bless you. And uh, as we prepare to give now, as we prepare to worship God in giving, allow me just to give thanks in a word of prayer. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, you are the giver of all good and precious gifts. And you've given us life. You've given us the ability, O oh God, to create wealth. And we thank you, Father, for supplying for our needs and giving us that we may give back to the work of ministry. We pray a blessing, O oh God, upon all those who are able to give and a blessing, too, upon all those who are unable to do so now, knowing that at the appropriate time, the showers and the blessings of God will be given unto them to give again. So we pray your blessing upon this offering and we pray, O oh God, you bless the rest of our service together in Jesus' name. Amen. Please watch this clip with more information on how you can give and be a blessing. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for your continued support of God's work even in these trying times. As we seek to bring the spread of the virus under control, we believe that God who sees in secret will reward you openly and abundantly. For the easy management of our finances, we have established a common payment platform for all our giving, irrespective of which assembly you attend and even for our visitors. You can now give via mobile money through the platforms of M-Pesa or Airtel Money. The pay bill number for either system is 933-934. I repeat, 933-934. For the account name, please indicate the SITAM assembly you attend and if you have joined us in this service but you are not a member of SITAM, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all the other SITAM people numbers remain operational. If you would like to make a direct bank deposit, electronic transfers or PESA link, please use the following account. The account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries, the bank, Cooperative Bank, a University Way branch, Account number is 011-280-617-639-00. I repeat, 011-280-617-639-00. The SWIFT code, KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. That is KC-O-O-K-E-N-A. If you prefer to give through our website, kindly visit www.sitem.org. Click on the Give tab and follow the instruction for online giving. Once again, we want to appreciate every one of you for every gift, every tithe, every offering and every generous material support. God bless you. Well, it's that time to hear from the Word of God and we are so glad you've stayed with us all the way to this point in our service today. It is our esteem and pleasure to welcome as preacher for the day, Mrs. Ada Adoyo. She has been at the forefront of prayer and women's ministry, family ministry here in the nation of Kenya for well over 30 years. She's also the spouse of our very first Bishop Emeritus, the Reverend Boniface Adoyo. It's our delight to welcome her to this platform and to this pulpit here at CBS to speak to us on the subject of looking to Jesus. 
And I'm sure that you're going to be tremendously blessed as she helps to wrap up our theme of prayer for this month of July. Please help me welcome to minister to us, Mrs. Ada Adoyo. And remember that our hashtag today is hashtag look to Jesus. Over to you. Thank you so much. I greet every last one of you in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's such, such a great joy, Reverend Rubadiri, for giving me this opportunity to share the word of God with God's people wherever they are scattered across the globe. It is a real great joy. And like Reverend has said, the topic is looking to Jesus. And as I was thinking about this topic, I, I thought, or, or should it be something? So I came up with something else and something else. But each one of them still telling us, looking to Jesus. I thought maybe as we wrap up this month of prayer, we could just focus on the sustaining power of prayer, the sustaining, the, the longevity of prayer. And then I also thought that the long lasting impact of prayer, I'm trying to say that, you know, prayer is not just a thing you do and you go and it ends. It has its own ripple effects over time and not just a generation, over generations and over um, a, a long period of time. So prayer is such a, it's such an important ingredient of anyone's life that as we wrap up this month's uh, uh, focus on prayer, I want you to come on board. And the secret really is you have to know and look to Jesus. So the topic, looking to Jesus. Let's pray one more time. Father God Almighty, thank you, thank you, thank you for the privilege of giving us an avenue and a channel on how to access you. This morning, even right away, we are accessing you and asking you to come and be part of this service, part of this um, group of witnesses that are scattered across the globe, dear Father. And I pray that each and every one that is part of this great service will be reawakened in the place of prayer, in the secret place where they can connect with a power that does not frustrate, that does not disappoint. So I thank you as I honor you, dear Father. This is my prayer because I've asked in Jesus' mighty name and we open our eyes one more time and say a big amen. Say a big amen. I would like to begin by reading from the book of Luke. Somehow I, I, I seem to use Luke quite a bit, but I guess I use other parts also. But I want to look at the book of Luke chapter 22. And I want to read verse 31 and verse 32. And then I will go ahead and read also verse 39 up till 46. These two places show us the importance of prayer as far as Christ himself is concerned. Verse 31 says this. I said the book of Luke chapter 22 and verse 31 says this, and the Lord Jesus said, Simon, 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 I have, Satan has asked for you that he may sift you, but I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail you. And when you have returned, you will strengthen the brethren. Jesus speaking to Simon, he said, Simon, Simon, calling him twice. Simon, Simon, I have prayed for you. And I thought, wow, what a thing that Christ would say, I have prayed for you. He wanted Peter to know that there was a backup support of prayer and that without that backup, Satan would have done him in. And so uh, I, I come to us just with those two verses, first of all, to say that it is important that you pray for somebody deliberately and let that person know. Let that person know. We are, we are activating prayer. We are activating this whole weapon of prayer, connecting with heaven above. And especially in this season where, to some degree, the church has been scattered. It's like you are alone. It's like uh, you, even if you are together, there's that uh, social distance that has been put to us. So there is that a bit of isolation. And there is a tendency of just feeling like so. 
Can I do it my way? Does it? And so the reason here, the point here that I'm saying is in this emphasis in prayer, make sure you are praying for someone and not just praying for someone. Let that person know that you are praying for them. How encouraging it is when you, somebody tells you, oh, last night I was praying for you. Oh, this morning I was praying for you. And Oh, this morning you were on my heart and I whispered a prayer. And so Jesus is telling us, let's support one another in prayer. Let's connect our different loved ones, friends, colleagues, connect them to the highest power, to the highest office, to the throne of grace. And you know what? We don't know what would have happened to Peter had the Lord Jesus not prayed for him. Maybe he would have done something more drastic than just deny Jesus. But because Christ prayed for him, we see a great man that turns out later on in, in ministry. But let me just quickly go and read now verse 39 of the same chapter, verse 39 up to 46. It says, Coming out, he, Jesus, went to the Mount of Olives as he was accustomed, and his disciples also followed him. When he came to the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. And, and he, was, um, he was withdrawn from them about a stone throw away, and he knelt down and prayed, saying, and we know what he said, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Verse 43 says, then an angel appeared to him, uh, appeared to him from heaven and strengthened him. And being in agony, verse 44, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Then he sweat, his sweat became like drops of blood. And the point here that I want to bring out here is he prayed for, Christ, for, for Peter. So Jesus prayed for Peter. And then it's like a few hours later, he's now in the Garden of Gethsemane, the story we know. And he tells the disciples, let's pray. You go there, pray. You go there, pray. And then it says he goes to his own section a stone throw away, and he kneels. I want to say this. I don't know where you are at, and some people have told me, oh, Mama Adoya, I have arthritis, I can't kneel and whatnot. I don't want to know about those details. Let's borrow a leaf from the Lord Jesus. The Bible says he knelt down. When we go to God in prayer, let's get in the habit of kneeling before him. And maybe raise your hands, maybe prostrate yourself on the floor. Let's do something that is, that is showing you deliberately that you are making a, a, a deliberate decision to connect with heaven above. And the Bible says Jesus prayed even more earnestly. He realized that he, the final hour was here. The hour of break it or don't break it. He realized, I have to show these guys, I have to show my disciples that everything else now has gone off. The point now that we have is we must connect ourselves with heaven above. And he did by example. And he prayed earnestly and he sought the face of God. But let me tell you something. In John chapter 18, because I couldn't find the parallel of this John 18 in um, in Luke, so I had to go there. So in John chapter 18 and verse 10, the word of God says this, the very Peter, maybe I should read it. Let me read it. Chapter 18, John 18 and verse 10, it says this, then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to say this, that when Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane praying, just what we've read in verse 39 up to 44, we read in uh, Luke 22, he, he, he was so honestly wanting to connect 
But when you get to verse 44, verse 45, 46, when Jesus comes to the disciples whom he told, come on, I want to find you praying. I want you guys to connect with a higher power. He comes and he finds they are sleeping. They are like, okay, it's tough, but the body is tired and we need to sleep. But you know what? When you read that 18, it's like, Peter wanted to connect in prayer, yes. The disciples wanted to connect in prayer, yes, but they had plan B. They had plan B. The plan B for Peter, he singled out because he actually carried out the use of plan, plan B. Peter realized, you know what? We are praying, yes, we are looking to God, yes, but when this, if these people don't behave themselves, we are going to turn muscle. We are going to turn mass. And I want to say this to us, my dear viewers and uh, wherever you are listening, I want to say this. When it comes to prayer, complete abandonment. I want to use that big word. Complete abandonment to God. I think, God, I give myself. Come what may, I'm giving myself. And that was the mind of Christ. Remember in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, we are invited to have the mind of Christ. And so Christ said, this is the hour, the hour that is going very decisive. I must remain in prayer. I must pray earnestly. And the Bible says the sweat came down like drops of blood, like boom, 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 the type of sweat that was coming from me. And he could have given up at that point, but not Jesus. He stuck it till the end. And then a big group mob of people, multitude, came to arrest one man. They came to arrest one man. And it is there that I told you, Luke does not bring out the point I want. So I went to John chapter 18 and verse 10. It's as this mob of people came to arrest him that Peter said, prayer aside, I know there is power in prayer, but there is immediate power in what? In my sword that I carried. And he slashed the worker the servant of the high priest's ear off. You know the story. Jesus said, this is not, not how we fight it. I don't know. I'm speaking to someone. I'm speaking to someone who, who is going through such difficult time that they are saying, I've prayed. I have prayed. I've surely prayed and connected with God. I've others go on to say, I've even fasted. I've even asked people to join me, but things are getting from bad to what? To worse. And instead of this, I can just bribe and get that job. This is easy. And then after that, I'll come back. In fact, I'll bring the tithe of that job to the church. Or I see years are going and I don't want to just hang around and miss being married. I would just marry this guy. He looks like he's okay. I would just marry this lady. She looks like it's okay. And you know inside you that that is not right. That's what we call plan B. That's what we call the way of man, the root, the thinking of man, not the mind of Christ. Prayer is the thing that Jesus left the disciples with saying, this is what works. It doesn't surprise me, therefore, when this multitude of people came like to arrest him, he was just surrendering. He would just say, oh, you are looking for me? Oh, here I am. Oh, you want to go this way? Yes. He never tried to run away. He never tried to fight back. He never tried to resist. He just followed. Why? Because he had already abandoned himself to a higher power that would take care of him. And I want to tell you, my dear viewer, that there is a higher power ready to take care of you. Connect via prayer. And sometimes people say, well, but prayer, prayer, how can I pray for 10 minutes? For me, five minutes, I'm already dry. Oh, we have already learned in the, in the first Sunday, we learned the importance of prayer. I know we've dealt with that. We also learned the support of family the importance of prayer at family level. Last Sunday, we saw the consistency in prayer and you have learned, yes, but now I tell you that it is time for you now to begin practicing, begin practicing, begin going to God in prayer, begin, yes, ask people to pray for you, but go it yourself. And you know, I wish I had more time. I'll tell you of the different times Christ himself 
went to God in prayer at night, in the evening, in the, in the wilderness, in the bush. He just did it at every opportunity. And if you discover the power of prayer, my friend, if you discover the pr power of prayer, it is so, it is so uh, energizing. It is so freeing. It makes you, it makes you realize I'm not alone. I'm not defeated. I'm not, I'm not on a last, uh, last gap grasp of um, last gasp of air I am with a high power and you know maybe you know you are looking at me and you're saying oh mama do you, you look like with the years it has come now me I'm too far away from you no there is always a beginning and we want you I want you to begin to look into this. As you look to Jesus and how he did it, you can also do it. That is why. And you know, as much as we see Peter failed, in the end, he didn't really fail. He realized that this is what works. The, the sword style will not work, will not take me anywhere. But the prayer style, will take me somewhere. And you see an old man, Peter, when he's writing his second letter, a letter in the, in the New Testament, he says in chapter, chapter one and verse 18, he writes and he says, I was an eyewitness. I saw and I heard. He could now look back and say, this is what works. Not only did I see, I heard. Not only did I hear, but I saw. I'm an eyewitness that prayer works. And that is why we are saying in this month, we've been saying and want you now to continue to get into that uh, mode of connecting and realizing that you have read and it can work. You have seen and it works. As it worked for Peter, it will work for you. As it worked for Mama Adoyo, it will also work for you. You know what? As a little girl myself, as a little girl, maybe I was five, maybe I was six, I don't know how I was, but my mother's father, my grandfather would wake up at five and would just pray, pray, pray a whole hour, maybe till six, it would now become daytime. And I did not know the impact of that. I just used to think, wow. And he prays naming everybody. That is, I thought it was just awesome, but as a child, it was, I think, as I stand before you, that spirit of prayer rubbed onto me from that time. And I wish this spirit of prayer would rub on you in this month of July that we have been talking about connecting with this power, the power of heaven. It can come to you, this gift, this spirit, the spirit of prayer that you may connect and know a higher power. You know, now I'm a grandmother. I have told you of a grandfather when I was small. Now I'm a grandmother and I have grandchildren. And you know, I am a mother of two daughters and I, they live out of the country, one in America, US, another one in Canada. And whenever I go, I make sure I have a place of prayer, a hiding place. And you know, my granddaughter gets up and says, where is grandma? And she knows when there is no answer, she knows I'm in the attic. I'm in the, up, up in the roof in prayer early in the morning. I am praying as I am speaking to you, as I am in that attic. I pray that this spirit would d descend on my granddaughter, would descend on my grandson, so that years from now, 50 years, 60 years from now, she'll be telling her generation of a grandmother that would get up to connect, looking to Jesus. And the other daughter lives in Canada for her. She doesn't have an attic. She has a basement. I have a place in the basement on a daily basis where I go to connect. And my grandsons, they come looking. And when they don't see me, they know I have got to connect. And my prayer is that this spirit of prayer would rub onto them just like that spirit of prayer of the Lord Jesus Christ rubbed onto Peter. I am here to say, my dear friends, I'm here to say, my dear viewers, that there is no certificate that you need to be a prayer. You just have to decide and commit yourself to connecting with God. And when you purpose to do, God is faithful and he brings it to pass. 
And you know, sometimes I think so we block our minds and we think, oh, that's, it's just for some, some of those other people. And yet it is for you who is listening to this message. This season of prayer, the month of July, it is for you to receive this spirit, to, to receive this uh, uh, connection to a higher power. And sometimes, you know, it's like, uh, so what, what am I supposed to do? And for me, I just, even you can begin with a song, just a song, and you repeat that song. Repeat, don't be in a hurry to go to another song. Just repeat that song. There is a way in which God uses your mouth to bring about that spirit of prayer, and you begin praying. And you know, I began by saying Jesus prayed for Peter. And you know, we have phones, we have our telephones with us. And you know, I've just learned, I just opened that phone and I saw the people, I look at the people that I talked to yesterday and I decide I'm praying for them. And you begin to pray, you pray for James, you pray for Grace, you pray for your niece, for your auntie, for the, and you find just as you begin that way, you find it's not ending. You find it's going and it gets so electrifying, it gets so time taking. By the time you finish a list even of 10 people, 20 people, whoever, you find that an hour has gone by and you can't believe. My friends, God has given us an avenue, has given us a channel, has given us a way of connecting with him so that you can become greater than your mind is telling you. Peter was a small man. He was thinking the, the sword is the power that he has. But Jesus was telling him, no, 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 Peter. There is another power that God wants to give you. What an apostle, the man who began the early church, who led the early church, who made major decisions in the early church to make you and me to know about Christ because Peter understood connecting with the power of heaven via prayer. He learned looking to Jesus. Let me finish by reading just the where that verse comes from, where we are saying looking to Jesus. And it is from Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse 1, 2, and 3. And 3 is the one that says looking to Jesus. Let me just read that as I now finish. It says this in Hebrews chapter number 12 and verse, verse um, 3. I can read the whole of it. Excuse me. It says this. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight that so every weight of sin and sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I want to declare to every man and every woman that this Jesus that invited Peter and say, look to me, I have prayed for you, this Peter, this Jesus is the same one as it says in that very book that I have read, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. The word of God says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. I am here to say there are many Peters that God wants to raise through prayer as you connect. He has prayed for, he prayed for Peter. He is praying for you and he's saying, come on board and be part of this great company of witnesses who live in this earth, not looking to their political leader, not looking to their big salary, but looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Let us pray. Father God Almighty, we thank you and we honor you. We appreciate you for who you are. Father, we are sorry that we think we know better. We think we can do better. We think technology can help us better, faster. And yet, Lord, you've given us a simple method of connecting with the power 
that can never bring commotion, that can never bring fights, the power and the kingdom of peace. And so, Lord, I thank you for every viewer. I thank you for every listener, wherever they are, that, Father, this grace that is ripe in this month of prayer, of connecting on CBS in prayer, that, Lord, this person and these people would connect and understand and embrace the power of prayer as they look to you, the author and finisher of our faith. And so I thank you, King Jesus. I thank you for this spread of this power that you are releasing right now because I have prayed and also because I believe in Jesus. Mighty name and all of us open our eyes and we say a good word. Amen. Good amen. And amen. 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 And amen. amen. Thank God you, Reverend. bless you so Thank much. You. I was so touched by at least just two points. I know you shared so much uh, on the importance of prayer, but uh, letting somebody that you're praying for know that you're actually praying for them. Amen. I think we're, we're very quick to say, oh, I'll pray for so-and-so, uh, and you may forget, but if you're thinking about letting them know or calling them back and saying, I prayed for you, it makes such a difference. Amen. And thank you for reminding us that uh, we should leave our swords behind. Uh, plan B is, is not uh, part of God's agenda. No. We should trust the Lord in our prayers. Thank and you. thank you for your prayers thank as well. You so much. God Amen. bless you so much. Amen. Amen. We do appreciate uh, Mrs. Adoyo. She's done a wonderful, wonderful job of just uh, helping us to conclude uh, in this month of prayer. And it has been such a blessing. Uh, to see and to hear of how God has answered prayer right through the month. Many, many of you have shared your prayer requests. Some of you have shared your testimonies on Wednesdays to let us know that God has been answering prayer throughout the month of July. And I pray that uh, whatever God has said to you, how God has spoken to you as a result of this message, your own life will be motivated to actually pray as uh, Mrs. Adoyo has encouraged us and admonished us uh, today. If you have a takeaway, please post it in the uh, chat sections, either on YouTube or uh, in, uh, on, on Facebook. Let us know how God has spoken to you and how your own prayer life has been shaped by what you have heard here on CBS uh, throughout uh, this month. We're looking forward to uh, your continued support and participation in this ministry. We have a, uh, a Tuesday evening after Sunday live discussion on the subject. If you have any questions for uh, Mrs. Adoya, she'll be joining us on Tuesday evening at five o'clock right here on CBS and also on Hope TV. And then, of course, on Wednesday, we resume our time of uh, uh, prayer in our midweek prayer service. Many of you send your prayer requests ahead of time, and uh, we want to let you know that we do pray for you. We do bring your requests before the Lord. Some of them are mentioned here. A good number of them are mentioned here, and others, of course, will be shared uh, uh, in prayer by those who continue to pray. We have a whole team of pastors who support in prayer uh, as well. We want to uh, encourage those of you who have been struggling. Uh, you, you've known that for a long time God has been pursuing you, perhaps there are burdens that you've been carrying, and now you recognize that you need to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to entrust yourself and entrust all that you are, are doing uh, into the hands of God. And if you'd like to do that, we want you to get in touch with us. We want you to directly contact us. Let us know that this is your decision by calling or sending a WhatsApp message to 0728-221-221. If you send us a message and ask for prayer, if you ask, uh, let us know that you've made a decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. We will have an, a follow-up team who will be in touch with you immediately and show you how you can begin to not only develop a life of prayer, but more especially grow in your connection with the Lord Jesus Christ. It's been an absolute delight to have you with us today. I know God has blessed you and will continue to bless you into the new week. I'd like us to now just end our time together uh, by sharing uh, together in the words of the grace. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen.